Hello everyone! So in this video, I'd like to introduce you to Ocean Parcels, its framework, and how to use it in your project of interest. So this presentation is a part of Seminar in Biological Science course for Mahido University International College. So let's get started. Ocean Parcel is basically a Lagrangian particle tracking tool or program which allows you to track different kinds of particles that are transported by the ocean around the world as um, shown in this simulation. And to introduce you to Ocean Parcels, it provides you with a set of Python codes which serves for different functions. And this program doesn't have a user interface, so you cannot simply interact with it just by clicking. And basically, it requires you to have some knowledge about Python coding in order to use this program. Ocean Parcel can be used to create and customize a lot of particle tracking simulations of any kind that you're interested in. So in my case, ocean plastic. In some cases, planktonic movements, larval distribution, and even fish population. I'd like to introduce some specific variables or terms first. The first one is OGCM or Oceanic General Circulation Model. It basically contains horizontal and vertical data of the ocean circulation, including velocity, temperature, and salinity. So these factors influence how the ocean moves, how the currents transport the particles around the world, and some other factors like wind, um, eddies, heat, precipitation, and climate change. So in cases where you would like to look at floating particles, then you can include horizontal grid which are latitude and longitude. But in case you'd like to include depth into your model, then vertical grid should also be in the picture. And some other variables are zonal velocity u and meridional velocity v. So these u and v variables would be in the coding sets. Basically, zonal and meridional flows are impacted by a difference in pressure, and zonal flow, um, you could say that it goes from west to east since it doesn't have much fluctuation in the way it moves. As for Mariotto, you could say it's north to south moving jet stream since it has a lot of wavy-like movement. As for the methods, I have divided it into three parts, the data input, the overall structure, and the analysis of the results file. And I find this part really important since a no user interface program it is really important for you to truly understand its framework as well as how to apply it in different scenarios so let's get into the first one which is data input these three databases are basically what i use so the first one is HICOM, second one stanford library and noaa so some types of data that are required the most important one would be the netcdf file or .nc file. As I mentioned before, OGCM is included in this NC file. And this physical and thermodynamic data is really important for your model. .nc file would also include specific time and location of interest. So for example, I'd like to know about the circulation of the Gulf of Thailand in 12 months of 2021. So that would be NetCDF file. And another optional file would be the shape file or .shp file, which involves only geographical composition. Or in easy words, it's the map where you can use to edit your result file. So moving on to the structure, there are few set, particle set, and advection kernel. So few set, the first one you'd create, is basically a virtual space as the ocean which includes a set of location, time, and variables of the ocean where you are interested in. So all these listed variables would be included in .nc file, as well as the particle set with you would be the one that inputs it manually. So particle set are basically the particles of interest to be released, and you'd like to input the location of release and the numbers of particles you'd like to release. An advection kernel would be the runtime and the time step, so how many times and how often you'd want it to run. 
Basically, when you are done with the process, your output file would be netcdf file. So the first set of code that um, Ocean Parsos provides you, the only thing you need to do here is to input the netcdf file in the blue box. And in this case, I'm using an example file from Ocean Parsos. And basically, the hydrodynamic data I mentioned, the U and V here, I included in the code. And the second part is to create your particle set. So you input the location, basically coordinates of particle release and the number of particles. So in this case, I'm releasing six particles in these different coordinates. And the next step is to set your runtime and time step. So in this set of code, it will let you name your result file, which in this case, I named it GC particle. As for the output DT, I input six hours and the overall runtime is five days. So it will run every six hours for five days, according to the netcdf file. As for observing and exporting the results, you can use pset.show and it will show you the image of the results. And once you're satisfied, you can use output file.export in order to export your netcdf result file. And this is how it will look like in Python when you run it. Here I'll drag it around just for you to see that the field set you created is basically a map embedded with variables you don't see. But if you drag it around, you can see other parts of the map. And um, that's pretty cool. But the programs would show you only the, the area that you input data in. So when you get your result file, you can do a lot of things with it. In this example, it's a distribution animation. So I'm testing the release of six particles for every six hours in January 2002. And basically, this is how the particles move from the first day to the sixth day. So here is a snapshot of each day for how the particle moves. You can output the snapshot results or you can also create animations like previously shown. Here's a short overview of the whole process. So basically you create your ocean framework first with the netcdf file and variables. Then you input your particles of interest, where you want to release it and how many do you want to release. Then you set your runtime and duration of the model. And lastly, you analyze your output file, applying it to different scenarios, whether it would be distribution patterns, trajectories, beaching, or even sinking and biofouling. So here I have an example of larvae dispersal of fan-shaped sponge, which uses Ocean Parcels program. So this is basically how it will look like. And in this case, for example, the location is in the Cantabrian Sea and the time would be in the year 2017. And another example would be the beaching patterns of ocean plastic in Indian Ocean Rim by Van der Meen. And basically the black particles are the floating particles and the red ones are the beach ones. So of course, this location is the Indian Ocean. As for the pros and cons of ocean parcels, obviously it is really nice and flexible. You can customize it and apply it to whatever scenarios you're interested in. And it can be used to track a variety of particles as well. So not only ocean plastic, but even marine species distribution, larval distribution, and many more. Then your obtained results could actually lead to some solutions in some cases, or if you're doing a research, it could prove your research question. As for drawbacks, it doesn't have a user interface. So for people that are not familiar with Python coding, it might not be as user friendly. And it requires really specific data sets like netcdf files, which in some cases could be really hard to obtain. And there are some other co-founding factors that might not be included, like specific events of climate change, which could make our simulations inaccurate. So to conclude everything, Ocean Parcels is a Lagrangian particle tracking tool, which provides you a set of ready-to-use Python codes. And you can input different data sets in order to apply 
your model into different scenarios. So it is really flexible. You can create simulations as 2Ds or 3Ds, and it is really specific in location and time that you can select. You can use it with different scenarios like beaching, clustering, biofouling. And if there's more research improvements and understanding of ocean parcels, then it would definitely lead to a more diverse usage in the future. So thank you so much for your time and please feel free to ask any questions or email me for any additional information. Thank you so much.